We're going to continue on with Michael Lake, and I asked the question, is not telling the whole truth, is that the same as lying? Stay tuned, find out. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. I appreciate you spending some time as I've as you may remember, we met uh, Michael Lake, who's an Englishman, mm -hmm. and uh, grateful that he's been able to come and share his story. And let's uh, just jump right in. You kind of told us a little bit about your background. You were, your folks were converted to the church. You yes, were uh -huh. baptized and born in the covenant, and mm -hmm. baptized, I guess, priesthood and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that uh, you'd... Um, Got married in the temple with your with your wife, right, and yes. then since then you've served some missions for the church. Is that right? Some service yes. missions. Um, I was told at birth, well, you know, very well, 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 the baby blessing, blessing. Baby, baby blessing yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, it was, a, it was not my memory directly of it, <laughs> but I was told um, that as a uh, foreordained basically to be a bishop uh, at the end times. Really, um, which stayed through a lot of the church um, training and yeah. part of it. So I've always had a very deep belief in the in, in the church end time philosophy. Okay. And, we, and they used to sort of say, you know, your chosen generation. Yeah. Whatever. Did you also have a patriarchal blessing? I did. Yes. Uh, which um, did that confirm that kind of leadership uh, it, potential? It, it did. Um, the key things for me um, in patriarchal blessing was. Um, well, they messed up the tongues one, okay. They could. <laughs> they messed, yeah, they messed up the language one. Because um, it says, it basically says, I'll be good at languages. And I was terrible at French, <laughs> German, whatever. Missed another one, huh? Missed it. <laughs> and it's only at secondary school when you sort of realise that actually it was um, IT languages. Uh -huh. I could pick up IT languages pretty good. Yeah, you were at IT. So well, IT was okay, but... Yeah. Um, there's a few wasted years of uh, my father trying to get me to learn French and stuff, which wouldn't, <laughs> it just wouldn't click. Um, well, well, during this time, that after you're married and your children are coming along, you served as, you were in the Sunday school and the primary, you served as a ward mission leader. Yeah. Um, other um, callings that you had that... May, a lot of my time was in your men's. I spent, I spent an awful lot of time with young men, uh, especially because since had children. In the scouting? And yeah. And so uh, uh, so we, don't, we don't really have scouting in England so much. Oh, well, I guess not. Even though Baden Powell yeah. was a. Yeah, scouting's outside of, outside you know, of church, the church a bit. But, not um, so much there. Um, yeah, an awful lot of time in the, in the young men's programme. Um, and a lot of time in ward missionary uh, yeah. sort of work and missionary efforts. And during this time, there's just no question that the church was true and that the Book of Mormon was. Not, True, not, and Joseph not. Smith was a prophet and restored the church and restored the gospel. And No, to, to me it seemed just too many things. It, it was a case of everything just pointed that, yes, it's true, that, yes, I had my own little um, failings we always trying to improve because obviously that's the whole point of the, yeah. um, the, the system, the way the church operates. It's about, you know, progression, progression, progression. Yeah. Uh, so you're always chasing that sort of... Um, being more efficient with time management, better husband, better priesthood holder, sort of better at whatever. Always trying know. to do better. Better cook, you better cook anything, you know. Yeah. But, um, so, so we're chasing that, and um, like I said, we love the church, um, believed very much that um, there would be an end time coming, and um, constantly gave up quite a bit of uh, my time and careers at time, on and off to try and help. Well, you sacrificed, you mentioned earlier to me that you'd sacrifice some career and educational opportunities because you were serving in the church and, yeah. and working for the church. You worked in the IT department and so on. What really started the process of changing in your life? I, I know your son went on a mission. Was that kind of the beginning of things? Um, it, it, probably was, it probably was a little bit. Um, my son actually, like I say, he's very, he's very lucky. He's, he's, this is Chris. Um, he went over to Mich Michigan. Uh, so he went from England to Michigan. Yeah, they sent him. Yeah, sent from England. Well, to at least he didn't America. have to learn a new language. I guess. Um, bless, bless his heart. He had a terrible experience uh, doing that. Oh dear. Um, they, well, first thing he got got stuck at customs. 
but um, <laughs> the, but the, the flight wasn't direct. He went through Houston. Um, customs took like three hours, and he missed his flight to Michigan. And it, yeah, to, to, uh, well, to Salt Lake originally because he's, oh. he's, he's going to the, the MTC. MTC. Oh, yeah. okay, sure. And uh, it happened to be during um, one of the worst tornadoes that had out. Funny enough, over that area. Another uh, tornado. Huh? Yeah, another tornado. Yes, and you look at the dates. It's a, <laughs> the plane that because we, we're sitting at home trying to think where he's going, and we're watching the flights on the computer, thinking this is where the flight's gone. We think we we thought he'd caught this flight, and we watched it as he flew around the tornado because it had a curve <laughs> oh, around the zone. And he got to Salt Lake, and we thought, oh great, he's there, he's safe. Yeah. And then um, we got about an hour and a half later, we got a phone call from America saying, Mom and Dad, I'm still at Houston. <laughs> um, can you give me the name of the, the, the contact details of the mission president because I've lost them? And so I, I don't know what to do. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. we're doing that. Um, the church tried to track him down. The state president was brilliant. He, he, you know, he, he tried to do a few things. The actual church, at further than the state president, um, didn't seem to do a lot. I mean, there's actually an MTC in Houston. You know, why they couldn't have sent him? Oh. Why they couldn't have sent someone to go and pick him, pick up, him up or rescue him? Take care. Um, I don't know because he's he's never travelled overseas in his life before, <laughs> right? Yeah. So he's in, so he's now in a sort of foreign land, so a foreign land, a, no phone. Got off a on a rough start yeah. there. But he had some questions that came up, right? Didn't he have some? Didn't he start studying, or he was being asked questions that? Made him start thinking. He's asked. He's asked questions, but the, the, the bit I'd just like to take just two minutes to explain sure. is, is is how he uh, he didn't want to pay three hundred dollars for a hotel overnight. Okay. Oh, they're in yeah, in Houston. Yeah, Houston. So so he's pray he's praying there, and he went on the standby flights. And because of the bad weather, there's very few seats. Mm. Uh, and while I was praying, after about sort of a few hours, it just turned out that there was one seat. Which he managed to get yeah. to go to Salt Lake, and he thought, well, that's near, you know, being near Salt Lake's closer to the MDC than where I is. I am at Houston, right. so he thought he'd take it. So he jumped on this uh, flight. The person he's sitting next to got moved, and and, and they swapped, and, a, and another person came over, who it turned out was ex LDS, ex LDS, ex LDS, yeah. who used to drive the temple presidents around, the prophets around. Oh, well, he used to be a chauffeur for the for the prophets. Right. Interesting. And they were talking, and during the course of the flight, because he hadn't got nowhere to go and it's since gone dark, um, this this wonderful guy actually took him in, and they put him up for the night, in transit. Wow. Um, and you can't, you, know, you can't really thank the guy enough because he uh, he had some friends who were obviously not church members. And they came around and they sort of said, why are you putting this missionary up, you know, this is, yeah. this is our least missionary. And he just goes, well, it's because I want to, I'm going to look after him. And he actually threw his uh, sort of non-member friends out a little bit to look after, to, to look after your, my son. Your son. That's and, um, next day, showed him a bit around um, Salt Lake City and helped him get on to the MTC. Out of Provo. Yeah, out of Provo. Yeah. And all this time, it, technically, he was missing from the point of view that nobody in the church knew where he'd gone. <laughs> yeah. Because all the concerts and until things. Until he showed up down yeah, there. Yeah, until he showed up and got there. Oh. But he's saved, actually, from a, from a non-member. That's fantastic. What a great okay. story. So that's, that's why we just shared that few minutes with you. Yeah, it, I'm glad a great, you did. Some good people. Well, did he share people. that? Did, he, did that fellow share any of this? Anti stuff with your son, or I don't think not them aware of. No, he no. looked, just looked after him and uh, took him under under wing. Oh, um, that's a great story. Uh, the, the problem he had on the mission field was when he started knocking on doors, and he's finding out that um, people were seemingly seemingly knowing the church history better than they were taught. <laughs> the missionaries, <laughs> things the that they history. didn't know about, yeah, things they didn't know about. Yeah, and it started rapidly becoming quite clear to him that there's something not quite right, but. But the, the bigger problem was he's in, he's in the MTC and uh, he got injured on the first week. Uh, oh. Somebody um, decided to play uh, American rugby tackle, oh, yeah. really, but they shoulder barged him. Oh, yeah. Hit him in the chest and uh, he had some heart problems and pains. After that? Since, yeah, for a little while. 
and all through for months on his mission he was complaining of pains and what have you and uh, his leaders were just saying well you know you, you just put your faith in God work harder you know ignore it ignore it <laughs> carry on Gee. and he, he's getting he got really severe he got really really, really severe and um, the mission president eventually says, look, I prayed on it, there's nothing wrong with you, you, you happy, happy contract or something or whatever. Um, to which they started having a slight disagreement because Chris, Chris was now almost in tears on, on times with, with, with the pain of it. And we got a phone call at home. Wow. Um, and I studied psychology at the time um, at Ewell's University and uh, Professor Matalow, who's uh, one of the UK's leading thinkers, this is one of your teachers. Chris Wilson, he's my former tutor at, uh, my tutor at the time. And um, we had this mission present there sort of saying uh, how he felt that my son was just homesick. Oh. And it was an excuse coming home. And I'm sort of saying, well, that doesn't really compute. You know, I don't know, know how, he, how hard he worked to go on this mission. He, he spent three years going out with the missionaries beforehand. Getting you know, ready visiting, to go. Getting ready to go. Yeah. So this, this isn't really had up. Um, and we had this uh, disagreement with, with, with Mr. President, in effect, that he said, well, we we'll, we'll arranged him to come home. We'll see, give him a few months. But um, he came home just before Christmas. Mm. Um, he was told he wasn't allowed to say goodbye to anybody. He was told to pack his bags overnight. And go. And go. Um, because he couldn't immediately get the direct flight, he, he, he's, he's put under, um, what do you call it, area mission uh, area oh, yeah. president. Took it, took it, took it, man. Where they still put him on active duty despite the fact he had a suspected heart problem. Hmm. Okay, so, so one day before the flight, he was, he was um, you know, still out there serving. Um, he's sent home by himself. We were on a flight, which meant you know, changing a couple of times. And when, we, when he actually arrived, we met him at the airport, he was a wreck. I bet. Um, and suffice to say, then, within 24 hours of him actually getting back, he was in an accident and emergency. He had been admitted to hospital. Oh, boy. Um, and is he so, OK now? Um, he's OK, but um, suffice to say, there is actually physical evidence that you know he was injured. He's, oh. he's, 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 it's now three, four years on, and he's still got heart injuries and oh, shoot. and what have you. So um, yeah, the, the spiritual advice, unfortunately, of the priesthood was somewhat <laughs> failing. Yeah, and it, it's led to it's led to him suffering for years as, as a result of it. I bet he's pretty unhappy it's, about that. Yeah, and, and uh, you are too, of course. We are. Yeah, um, but. That was that was an incident which starts sort of getting you also a bit concerned. You know, yeah. th these were these were serious, uh, you know, priesthood leaders who were um, making making, making claim, you know, making claims yeah. and having responsibility of care. Yeah. Um, well, so was this part of your transition, or were you transitioning before that? And what happened to, to bring that about? Uh, as you brought it up, it just clicked that yes, that did happen slightly before the thing, but it was actually in a uh, priesthood lesson. Where somebody, let's say, somebody was just said, and you just taught at university. Well, you know, you got to look at all areas. You got to weigh it up, and let's say I had a particular, particular interest in this logical thinking because of my IT side. So I was under this sort of, <laughs> you know, thought process guys thinking, thinking. Yeah. And this guy just said to me, and it, it just struck me, well, that doesn't make sense. What he said, you know, that's that nonsense. He, he doesn't. Now, what again did he be, say? Oh, I wish I could remember. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, 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 well, whatever it was, it just, it, just didn't, it just didn't compute. And uh, mm -hmm. I went away and looked it up. I remember just looking, looking, sort of looking, looking, looking this thing up and just finding, well, actually, he's wrong. And I thought, well, I go, if they're wrong about that, what else? What else? <laughs> and that was the Pandora's box. That was a mistake. Of, you know, then it was a case of. Well, I started, you know, read into uh, Lighthouse, Utah Lighthouse Ministries work and what right. have you, um, some of the work from Sean McCraney. Okay. Cross looking against that, against the, both the other side, the church side. And, yeah. Well, interestingly, you looked at the gospel essays, right? Um, Didn't you feel like they, they had not told everything that was out there to tell? <laughs> Well, it's, the gospel essays were going back about four or five years. The gospel essays were just starting; oh. they're just starting to come out oh, okay. after after the event. A little bit, no. It was, it was uh, we looked at some of the things, but it's more like fair, 
you know, the fair. You but know, you took to, time off to actually study the church history. I right? quit. I quit. I quit uni. Um, it's my life. My church has been my life. I've been born in the church. Yeah. I mean, understanding the, you know, the the strange experiences which had happened through my life and what have you, the things and things which have happened. All suddenly, like, well, what's what's real? Yeah. Um, and so, no, it's in the case. The, there's nothing more. There's nothing more important than having God knowing the truth at that point. Um, and it, uni just went, and I just spent 12 to 14 hours a day for three months. And what kind of things did it. you learn? Unfortunately, just about every, everything, <laughs> everything you know, about first things visions. Things you've never heard though so before. Things, yeah, yeah, things I've never heard before. Chrissy had started uh, to hear some of it um, on his mission. Well, that's what I was okay, thinking. Okay, but he, so he's seen it a little bit. But for my, but he's, 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 this was he's only just starting to come back in whatever well, at that point, and, and he was fairly sheepish about some of the things that had been said. The. Uh, it, no, it, it, it was, it's just the fact of you live in a bubble um, to an extent, but you don't ask questions. You don't, you're told not to. You, I believe what the church said, you know, that, uh, you know, a lot of the church is outside or more or less of the devil or whatever, you know, the, the society the society, and whatever. So, so, so he lived in this, in this LDS bubble. Well, and you mentioned the teachings yeah. of the president's manuals that they don't tell the whole story, yes. like a Brigham Young That's or right, yeah. Joseph Smith and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, I just think I was horrified that, by the truth of, of what you were learning. Of what I was learning about the end, and the, including the um, the free, you know, the Freemasonry connections to the temple. To the temple, yeah. Isn't that shocking? I had never understood that either. Yeah, that sort of uh, that sort of scared me. The fact that quite a few of the uh, well, the first, certainly the first three sort of prophets were all linked. Yeah, went that way, and I thinking, why? You know, um, I remember going to temple recommends and being told, uh, "Are you a member of any sort of organisation? You're not supposed to, or whatever, any sort of cult, you know, cult yeah. or anything like that." And I got raked over the coals for um, studying martial arts for one. Oh. Because at one point, for about two to two years, we studied um, uh, ninjutsu under a um, Japanese school in, in, in the UK and they, they were all like oh I'm not sure you should be you know doing that because what are they? it's hard but you know it's, it's good it's good film, it's good, you know, it's, religious it's, it's yeah wasn't religious but then you're thinking the, it, it just seems like hypocrites yeah you know they tell me off for that and yet you've got people part of these sort of secret groups you know behind <laughs> the scenes having recommends and doing everything and it's yeah. like I couldn't, you know, uh, I, I got really disillusioned with the, um, the the hypocrisy and the lies and the, you know, the deceit of the leaders and whatever you want it. Well, my list just started getting longer and longer. I mean, Book of Abraham and uh, you mentioned Masonry, but the Book of Mormon and Book of Commandments and it, yeah. Joseph Smith marrying uh, that's other right, women, yeah, that's the, it, yeah. w women that had al already had husbands and stuff. Uh, uh, I, I, what I really resented at the end of it, after coming out of the three months, is I've I said word for the church office as well, and uh, and I remember certainly you know like the tanners' names being mud in the church, you know, in church office. Oh you know, yes, you know, the certainly tanner, you know they yeah. were you know yeah. The tanner, yeah. And um, the, 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 and there's people being fired and sacked and doing you know doing research and while they're writing books and then being me sacked and kicked out and whatever you. And I just couldn't believe when, when I read about the certainly the Sears stone at the end. The Sears stone. Yeah, they had known about that for all my life. Right, for all my life they'd been negotiating, looking to try and buy and obtain this stone. And yet I spent almost all my life teaching about the golden plates, the human throwing, <laughs> believing translation. absolutely, absolutely trans sorry, the translation. Yeah. Uh, got a slightly damaged jaw at school for sticking up sort of when people challenged that and saying, yes, no, I believe it's true. And it got, it got hit and um, defending, the, defending church, the church. And then only to find out that the leaders have been lying all the way through. Um, that was That's what that was I meant harsh. by, they're just not telling all the truth. Yeah. You know, they just don't tell the whole story, and so you wonder, is that really lying, or is it... It just seems to me that there's so many things that, that now I think the Internet is uncovering some of this past history and doctrine that uh, the church isn't, hasn't been forthcoming with. And, 
But the essays, you mentioned even that a Sunday school teacher was once... Uh, well, they get in trouble for... Taken yeah, off yeah, being you, a teacher because she was quoting or using these gospel right, yes, essays. Yes. Isn't that yes. crazy? Um, there's, there's a lot of kickback uh -huh. uh, that people become very paranoid and sensitive um, yeah. about it. Um, I, from my own point of view, after seeing Chrissy injured in the way he's, he's, living, he's living his life now uh, with a slight injury because his achievement wasn't done yeah. earlier. And I look at um, my own life, you know, where he, he gave up career and whatever you what I, uh, f for what turned out to be people a sitting, lot of sitting, sitting there, made, yeah. sitting there, thinking, "Well, you don't need to know." Somehow, somehow they seem to think, "Well, we're better than you. We we can know the truth. You don't need to. You we don't want you to. Yeah, we don't want you to. You, you don't need to. You just you just yeah. do your little snippet. Um, whether you call it life of the Lord or how they want to try and justify it, it is outright like, and it's an abusive relationship." You know, because it's a two-way thing. We expect it to go in, have our recommends, be honest with them about everything. And yet they reserve the right not to be honest with us. With us. That's a good point. Um, and so that is a purely abusive relationship, but that, um, that thing. And... I'm, Mike, let me ask you this. The, a lot of this is what I call the bad news. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people don't bring Jesus and things into into the forefront after this happens. They yep. just give up on everything. You've been able to bridge that a little bit. Uh, it's, how, it's, did you have a, a moment in time that kind of, what happened to prayer? To prayer? prayer. At the end of it, I had um, finished doing, doing all this study basically for months on end. Uh, I've been um, duly talking to my wife about it. Yeah. Um, there's no, there's Was no, she upset? She was, yeah. she, but uh, but we have a relationship where she knew for well. Um, well, she loved you and trusted you, maybe, and yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry. But yeah. Uh, there's a there's, there's, there's a spell where I'd lost what God was, because obviously I, I understood the Mormon concept of the Godhead, the Mormon yeah. concept of whatever. And I've just read all this stuff from the Lighthouse Ministries and everything else, and it's like, well, where am I now? You know, I've seen things, think, you know, bizarre things. How the odds on the phone ringing at 7.30 in the night when, you know, you're about to lose it and you're praying to God and certain things. There's been so many coincidences in my life, um, you know, including when my son sort of got injured once in, in Birmingham. And... Uh, you get the call, the Jay call from the police saying, can you come down, you know, mm. um, and you're praying to the Lord saying, I've got to travel from Birmingham to, uh, you know, back to Telford, get the ambulance. And it just worked out all perfectly. And we're in the ambulance sort of thing and holding his holding son in my arms and he's coughing up blood and all sorts of things oh, from a fall. Yeah. And the, the, the people are saying, well, you don't want to know what that is. And you, break, you have, a, have a prayer and you give a blessing. And he just falls asleep in your arms sort of thing. Um, and next morning, you know, this was a blue flashing light job. They transferred him from, um, uh, was it? T -t 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 it was from Telford to Shrewsbury, I think he went. But anyway, but, but they, they, actually, they actually had police cars lined up, escorting the ambulance wow. through, sort of thing. So the police, the police cars going through. But so uh, say so he had this blessing. We prayed. Next morning, apparently the doctors went to see him in hospital. It's fine. It's, mm. yeah, other than black eye, he says, right, it's rain. And so, so you think, well, what's going on? You know, where's the reality yeah, in, I, in all, in all this? What am I supposed to believe? What am I supposed to believe? Because, yeah. the, you know, this is clearly there's a lot of lies and deception going on, and yet things happen. You know, things, things happen. And so I was, I was pouring out my heart basically to, to the Lord in that, and I said, Lord, I, know, I want to know you. I want to know, what, you know who, who you are. And um, I felt inspired to just draw, you know, quickly. And um, lo and behold, because I've been following Sean's show, you know, sort of thing, it came across. And, then, and he said, this week, God part one. God part Straight, one. It was literally God part one, that's the title, they've since read it. But, it was literally God part one. I thought, you know, 
Oh, fine. Is that not the saga? I wonder who got his. He released the God Part One started. So uh, watched, started start watching that and struck a relationship with uh, Sean McCraney over, over, over the years. But um, shortly afterwards, a few, a few months afterwards, we were fairly happy to be out of it, not to be lied to. I mean, it was horrible to think that you got people sitting on the stand manipulating you and not yeah. telling you the truth and what have you. Um, at that point, you did sort of smooth over a bit. The the problem really came more in about April when I actually made the uh, jump to put me, terminate me membership. Oh, you did? Yeah. April yeah. what year? Was that 14? Uh, 2014, yeah, it'll be about yeah. 2014. And, few, yeah. and it was, I, I've got a copy of the letter at home, still so I kept one. <laughs> um, and I actually told them that, in effect, you know, I was actually hoping that one day the church would actually learn to be more Christian, more honest in its de dealings when I left. Um, but I handed that in, and the sense of community, you know, it just got cut off a lot. It just closed, it closed down you a lot. Lose, you know, lose like, friends, lose family. these friends, family, and all sorts. Oh. And it's been my whole life, nothing but I'd ever known. And I now found myself in this world with, you know, so I remember the temple videos, you know, the guy with the dog collar, you know, the, the devil dressed up, <laughs> yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, you, you sort of, you find yourself in this sort of alien world where you, 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 you're taught, it's almost like, a, you know, hell, you know, you'd be thrown out. Um, and, and my health suddenly started deteriorating um, fairly rapidly over the two months. And, and people you, probably blame that on your leaving the church, they did, do they? Yeah. Oh, there's several, several people would turn around and leave yeah. that on, on the church. Well, one thing that I just want to interrupt maybe for a second, but all these positive experiences that you have, and I had them as well, yeah. I kind of boiled it down to the fact that God loves me. It had nothing to do with proving the church was true, but it was proving that God loved me as a person yes, and that he cared for me. and. Do you, did you sense that too at all? Well, I, I sensed that. As I said, there's, 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 there's a moment I got suicidally depressed. You know, um, I felt I felt maybe for family to ruin. My wife was really suicidally depressed. She would lost a thing. She, she 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 didn't want to be in it because she lost a family prior to that for the church. Yeah. So from her point of view, um, both her husband, sorry, both her father and mother had died uh, without being reconciled. Oh. Um, they never got. And they to never know. got to realise that. You know, we come out and realise the church was wrong. Oh. Um, and she was Relief Society president. Yeah, she was Relief really Society president. But um, well. <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, but um, yeah, so I was there this one night, and I just said, yeah, I, you know, I've, I've just, I've just destroyed everything. I just wanted to end it all. And um, I was sitting there. Um, the show I watch is normally seven hours behind. I tend to be a late night, so I thought I was just going to kill myself that, that, that night. You know, oh. and. You're still praying. You still love God. Uh, there's still an element of it, but you just feel you just destroyed the family and everything. Yeah, you know, too, too much problem. Uh, so, uh, the longer and short of it, well, I decided to shoot myself because that's <laughs> God. So, God, yeah, God's. But, um, the, the, but there's an element of. I felt inspired to stay up and watch the watch the what, what I show. Um, and it was a Tuesday night. Well, Wednesday morning our time. And. Just as uh, this was happening, uh, the show was changed. There's an announcement that's basically saying that they've changed from their scheduled programme, because I knew what the scheduled programmes were yeah. likely to be. And apparently there's been a change, for, change from the scheduled programme, and they decided to do a show on the cost of being a truth seeker. Wow. That night. I thought, that sounds interesting. <laughs> since I'm and seeking since for seeking truth. truth. Yeah. And I watched that, and there's about a 10 minute segment in it where Sean actually warned people. Um, you know, like, if, if you, you know, this is, this is serious. If you, want, you want to be a truth seeker, watch it, but if you don't turn the channel, you know, just, <laughs> just do it. But, uh, but, but he read out like the problems that people, they give up, you know, and the suffering and the, and the things through it. And I just thought, oh, yes, that's, that's true. And I do want, you know, I do want God in spirit and truth. Uh, and then. It's a phone in. He has a, he has his phone in section at the end, and I'm, I'm saying, yeah, okay, I'll get I'll get, I'll get that bit, God. 
Uh, and then there's no calls, mysteriously. He had a, a quiet segment for about five, five, ten minutes at the end. So yeah. to, in order to fill the, the calls, we decided to read some earlier posts. Mm. One of them he picked up, it hadn't got the name on it because it had to take the name off it. And he read it. But there was my post from six months you'd sent or so earlier, which I'd sent in. But he didn't know who it was, it was anonymous. And he read it back at the end of the show, and it was my thanking him for helping me find the truth. Something that you had shared with him six months earlier. Six months earlier. And he was reading that he was reading, to you. Oh, no, yeah, back alive. <laughs> and he's reading that now to you. He's reading a bit, maybe that back, back to me at a time when I was really, really so depressed. And again, you go back coincidences. You know, yeah. some strange coincidences. Well, that was special. Um, so that was special, and that then led. Um, onto, uh, shall we say, a new path, and praise from, God. Fr from there, miracles still want, still happens because um, the next job was then trying to find out more about the truth, the gospel. Yeah, and uh, we're praying, and I went to bless his heart. It was hard coming out. Um, the local, one of the local groups up the road, I suppose better not name them because they were... Well, yeah, you, that's fine. But, but uh, he went around there and they're saying, oh, are you born again? I said, well, things I pray to God, I, you know, he's, he's, he's working with me. And the next thing is, well, can you speak in tongues? <laughs> you know, he's, he's pretty sure born huh? again. I says, well, what do you speak in tongues? He says, well, you're speaking, speaking languages as a sign of whatever. You. I said, well, I'm a speaker in probably about four or five computer languages. Which one do you want? <laughs> so, so, so. There's no French. <laughs> yeah, no French. No French. But, no French, but, um, but, but you start to find yourself in this weird, weird, wacky, nonsense world yeah. of uh, Christianity now, which is starting to happen. It is wild, yeah. And it's wild. And so we're praying for help on that. And um, I decided we try and go to a college and try and learn. But obviously, we're not that affluent, and so it was his case, we wanted something we could afford. And it, it, it wound, out, wound up in a bizarre way that uh, one of the churches, I, I prayed as to which church you should go to. Was I jumped in? No, no, okay. we've got a couple yeah. more minutes. As Pray, well. Oh, quickly, okay. I prayed to which church I wanted to go to, and um, uh, visit, and Smith said, look at this one in Litchfield. So I went back to my hometown in Litchfield, despite the fact we were Warsaw. Met a lady at a Bible college, sorry, um, the, the Bible readings there, that sort of thing, the Bible study group, who introduced me to a John Warner, who runs actually a Bible school. Hmm. So I went to met with this John guy and explained where I'm coming from. Sounded great, the price was right, the course was right, it's accredited, it's not one of these bogus, you know, things, yeah. it's, it's actually government accredited. Um, and decided to go and do that. And you and Jan both did it together. Um, right? Eventually. Oh. Um, what happened was the Sunday after I'd promised to go and visit another church because we were hunting, trying to find somewhere to go. Uh -huh. And I'd promised a pastor supreme, <laughs> but supreme but, um, that I'd go and uh, visit this, local, this other local church. And I, tur I turned up and I got there and it was a case of, oh my word, it's um, purely Pentecostal sort of... Um, Zimbabwe mm. type, type worship. Um, I felt really awkward because I was like the only white person there, oh dear. seemingly at the thing. Yeah. And they're all, they're all in this, uh, this sort of worship style I've never seen. And whatever, you go to the door and say, oh, I promise, I promise Lord to go and do this. Can you help me through it? Anyway, so I go through the door. And next thing you know, it's, hi, how are you? And I got a bear. Felt the love, huh? No, it, was, uh, it, was, it had to be John Maunder. Oh. Who was, who, who was there and apparently, um, Every second week of the month or so, um, he, 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 pre he preaches at that school. Interesting. Sort of thing. And uh, not only that, he turns to be on the actual board for supervising as a reverend. Wow. Um, so, yes, we're taking in, slightly love to have a chat afterwards. Um, and then from there, that led into further Bible scholar study, two years of training. Um, the links have been wonderful. That's led us to renewal, which has led, led, linked us to, to the Order of St. Leonard's, which yeah. is the John Maunders, or Reverend Maunders, um, supervisor. That is the bishop, yeah. uh, David Carr, OBE. Okay, so he's an OBE. And he's the, outside of the UK, he, 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 he'll be um, the representative for the Free Methodist 
mm. which you know, is one of two of the, around the world who represent it. And he's met the Pope and various other things. He teaches the Reverend. Uh, and uh, John Warner took us under wing and took us into his weekly home sessions for two years mm. as well. So not only did we get the Bible College, but we get the direct training and support from... And so you finished the, the program? And no, the pro you never finish in this oh. game. You never get to finish. Well, let me um, ask you this with is... No what... starting chaplaincy training. Oh. Okay, so now doing level five uh, chaplaincy training under uh, David Carr, OBE, who's... Uh, you know, Bishop Carr, uh, he's spent 25 years you know, in hospitals okay. and he's, he's, he's trying to train chaplains and so me, myself and my wife are now doing chaplaincy training. Well just to finish up because yeah. we are out, out of time, time yeah. just tell us about Jesus, what he means to you differently now than a, as a Mormon. I'm free. Um, the big thing is I'm free. Um, I also find that whereas I had problems in my life and things I wanted to change and you try and push it through from the LDS perspective, they, they've gone. You know, there's, there's a bunch of things I couldn't get over, I have got over yeah. um, from it, so. Um, did you understand grace as a Mormon? So did you understand? Did you understand grace as a Mormon? Not, 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 not in the same perspective as you do now, no. no. Um, but, you know, I, the, the final thing I'll leave you, leave you with is uh, I, about one and a half years through Bible college, I'm sitting there thinking, who on earth am I? I'm a dinosaur, I'm washed up, I'm ex LDS, and you've got people playing guitars, you know, 20 year olds and whatever. Um, and I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, what on earth is the point? And you know, I, I just one day I just sat on the back on the lean to conservatory sort of thing, looking out, praying to the Lord, help me, what, you know, what, what is the point? It, you know, it, it, it's, it's futile because I'll never compete with these 20 something year olds. And I was really depressed. My wife was sitting alongside me, we discussed it. And lo and behold, no sooner we'd done that, than a strange event happened with the sun and the things. And what happened was the Sun had become like the moon. The, ray, the, rays had come up, the rays had come up around it and it looked like Jupiter. Mm. And the colour came into it and it actually showed the colour of Jupiter. And the clouds actually sort of went around it, almost framing it but not flowing over it. For, this was about four minutes we tried filming it. So actually, you know, myself and wife saw this. And there is actually symbolism between, you know, between Jupiter and the moon and things within go Jewish and we face and we realise that the Lord's still with me, regardless of the transition, regardless of, regardless of, of what going happens. through it, things are happening. God, this was yeah. before the chaplaincy course coming on and what have you, but there's, so, there's a plan somewhere. We may not understand it, it may not fully uh, become no. clear for some time, but he works with but us, but it transcends religion. Yeah. He works with the people not the religion and so that's that's, that's my but that's my understanding of, of, of the grace of god the, the you know that he, he steps beyond the religion and deals yeah. with the people and he knows who who, who are his people yeah well and i appreciated i appreciate your story and your message uh, to everybody and we just have a a, a relationship with jesus now this uh, personal recognizing his righteousness and yeah. what he did for us and knowing Absolutely. that God loves us. And, and like you said, you're free. We're free and uh, he sets you free and there's an element of, when I say free, I see myself as a bond servant. Yeah. I choose to serve him now. Now, I don't know if we posted it yet, but you do have a website, a, a blog. It's uh, ldsphoenix.net. That's right. And people can go to that to see or hear more of your story. They can, they can yes. And you'll be adding more to that, I guess. Absolutely, yes. And and being uh, an IT guy, you'll be able to do that. Hopefully, awesome. hopefully, yeah. <laughs> it's, been, it's changed over the years, but yes, I can do that. Um, but I deliberately went for LDS Phoenix because uh, LDS is my life. And I see myself as having to raise from the ashes. Lifted up. Uh, lifted up from a womanism going on. So that's why yeah. it's called LDS Phoenix. Oh, well, Mike, thanks again for coming all the way from England and for sharing your story. You're and we'll see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files. Thank you. Bye.